everyone. I hope you guys are doing okay. If you or your child are having any difficulties at all, give us a call or email us. Uh, we're here to help. This week, we are going to talk about lessons 33 through 36. So let's get started. This week, you're going to need your lessons manual, your student worksheets, the math card games manual and the game cards, the AL abacus, the colored tiles, and a dry erase board. This week, we are going to continue working on multiplication. So go ahead and turn to lesson 33. In this lesson, we are going to continue working on multiplication using arrays. Now remember, the array is an arrangement of quantities in rows and columns. So take a look at the six by three array as shown in the middle of the first page of lesson 33. In the activity under the heading arrays on the abacus, your child is going to build the six by three array using tiles and then build the six by three array on the abacus. You can see a picture of both of those in the middle of the first page of the lesson. Then under the section called the multiplication symbol. Under this section, you will replace the word um, the word by in the array, so six by three array, with the multiplication sign. So you're going to say six by three array is the same as six times three. Take a look at the section um, on the second page called the nine by or nine times four section. Here, your child is going to build a nine by four array on the abacus. You will use those beads to find as many ways as possible to find the solution to the problem of nine times four. There are four different, uh, four different suggestions included in this section, the middle of page, um, the second page of this lesson, to find out how to find how many beads are in nine times four. Some of them are regarding trading. Um, some of them are regarding you know, grouping. Um, your child may come up with their own way of solving this problem. As long as the answer is acceptable, go ahead and take it. Let your child think of different ways to solve this problem. Don't rush it. Um, don't skip this activity and don't rush through this activity. Activities like this one is what's really going to help your child develop thinking skills and analytical skills. Um, it's a little harder to teach, to be, to be patient for, um, and it's also a little harder for your child to do, but this is also where your child is going to grow in their thinking skills. Once this activity is completed, then your child is going to work through a portion of worksheet 14. They can use the abacus if they need it. The rest, the rest of the worksheet will be used in the next day's lesson. There is not a math card game suggested for this lesson, so you may want to pick a multiplication math card game to play since your child is starting to learn multiplication. Two games that will be played later on this week are uh, the multiples memory game and the sum rummy game. Both of those games have blogs for them. Let's go ahead and turn to lesson 34. In the warm-up section of this, or in the warm-up section of this lesson, your child is going to review addition and place value. If you notice your child is struggling a little bit on either one of these concepts, you might want to spend a little time playing a math card game to review or strengthen up those skills. After the warm-up has been completed, you will be playing the Sum Remy game. And we have a blog for that game. It's called 2019 Summer Game Number One Summer Rummy. <laughs> so kind of a play on words there. Look at the section called One Multiplied by a Number. Um, in this section, um, take a look at the explanations. It says the child should not be taught any rules about one multiplied by a number or a number month multiplied by one. A mental image is far superior. Really try to refrain from telling your child the rule. Any number multiplied by one equals itself. Instead, instead help your child discover um, by look, using the abacus and figuring out that rule on their own. Do enough of examples um, through this to help your child discover that rule. In the middle of the second page, your child will compare two different problems. If your child struggles to remember the greater than or less than symbols, you can review that concept by looking at lesson 26. In this sec section, your child is going to compare an addition problem to a multiplication problem. 
These type of problems will really help your child see the difference between the two operations. Then you will give your child the rest of worksheet 14 to complete. Be sure to have your child solve each side of the comparison problem before deciding which symbol to use. Um, I encourage my children to do that because my kids would tend to jump to a conclusion without really looking at the problem closely, which caused silly mistakes. So having my kids solve the problems first really helped work on, on their accuracy. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 35. Congratulations. Once you complete lesson 35, you will have completed 25% of level C. So yay, it's time to celebrate. Um, for this lesson, your child is going to need their math journal pages. Remember, those pages are found in the back of their student worksheets book. The activities for this lesson will help your child understand that repeated addition is multiplication, just like 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is the same as 1 times 5. They will explore this concept by writing the equations and seeing how much easier it is to write a multiplication equation than a really long addition uh, problem. The math card game for this lesson, lesson 35, is the sum rummy game. Um, your child can use the abacus if they need to. Um, your child will actually play this game two different times. The first time your child is going to calculate the scores by using addition, and then the second time your child is going to calculate the scores using multiplication. Make sure that they say those problems out loud. For example, when you're doing the addition um, scoring, you're gonna say two, have your child say two plus two plus two plus two, um, which equals eight. Um, and then when you're doing the multiplication portion of scoring of this game, have your child say four times two equals eight. Um, that way they're, they're practicing their multiplication math facts and their addition math facts, and by saying it out loud, they're remembering those a little bit better. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 36. This lesson will introduce and work on the multiplication families of two, three, four, and five. Now these math facts are not to be mastered by the end of this lesson, but your child will see how these math facts work, work especially on the abacus. Um, after you work through the warm-up section, you will give your child worksheet 15. Start by having your child build the multiple set, multiples of two on the abacus. Once they've built all of the multiples of two on the abacus, then they will fill in the twos section of the worksheet. Don't just hand them the worksheet and expect them to solve all the problems. You need to be there. As soon as your child finishes the twos on the abacus and filling in the twos for the worksheet, then you are going to follow up with some questions. Don't skip this part. This is going to help your child get a better grasp on multiplication and how it works. Then you're going to have your child do the same thing with the multiples of five. Have them put the fives, multiples of fives on the abacus, then answer the multiples of fives questions on the worksheet. And then again, you're going to follow up with some questions to make sure your child is understanding what they're working on. Then you can let your child finish up the worksheet by filling in the multiples of threes and fours by using the abacus as well. Have them work through these two sections on the uh, worksheet independently if they can. The, multiple, uh, the game for this lesson is called Multiples Memory Game, and we do have a blog for that one. It is called 2017 Summer Game Number 7 Multiples Memory. When playing the game or even working through this lesson, do not have your child recite the order of their multiples. Um, if you'll take a look at the second page, the bottom of the second page um, under the explanation section, it talks about talks about this. It says, learning the multiples is necessary for fractions in algebra. Do not teach your child to recite them in order to find a multiplication math fact. Many parents will teach their children songs of the multiples, but this, or you know, maybe just memorize the order of the multiples, but this is actually harmful to the speed of solving multiplication math facts. Why do you, why, you ask? Well, if your child memorizes the list of their multiples, say of multiples of seven, then when they go to answer the problem eight times seven, they actually have to sing or say the entire list before they can get to the eight times seven. And this is really going to slow them down in solving that problem. Uh, and they're going to have a difficult time breaking the habit of skip counting to get to that answer. So that's it for the week.
As always, if you have any questions or concerns about a lesson, or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We're here to help. Have a fabulous week, everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week when we go over lessons 37 through 40. Bye, everybody.